Good morning, good morning, good morning. Who is excited to learn about color? I know I am. Color is one of my favorite subjects. I love everything about color. I love being able to give my client what they want. And also I get to be creative while giving my client what they want for their hair color. So today we're going to learn about the law of color, developers, and their purposes. Lightners and men's color. So the law of color states that there are only three pure colors. And those three pure colors cannot be made from any other color. I handed everybody a color wheel. I want you to fill it out as much as you can from what you remember in basics. So our color wheel, our three primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. Those are primary colors. When we mix those primary colors in equal parts, we're going to get our secondary colors. Our secondary colors, when we mix red and yellow, we get orange when we, in equal parts. When we mix yellow and blue in equal parts, we get green. Blue and red, we get violet. Now we're going to talk about tertiary colors. Tertiary colors are when we mix a primary color and a secondary color together. So when we mix a primary and a secondary in equal parts, we are going to mix red and orange, and we always want to say primary first, secondary next. So we have red, orange, when we mix red and orange together. Orange and yellow, we have yellow, orange. Yellow, green, blue, green, blue, violet, and red, violet. Those are considered the tertiary colors. Now we're going to talk about complementary colors. Complementary colors are opposite on the color wheel. They cancel each other out and take away the unwanted tone in the hair or unwanted hue in the hair. For instance, red and green. The thing that comes to my mind with red and green is Christmas. They cancel each other out, red and green go together. That's Christmas colors. Now I don't know who's all football fans in here, but let's go with violet and yellow. The Vikings. Those are complementary colors because they cancel each other out. They go good together. They look very good together, especially in the football uniforms. Blue and orange. Blue and orange, Denver Broncos. Now, we're gonna talk about how to make the perfect brown. And in making the perfect brown, we are gonna use three yellow. So one, two, three. And we use three yellow because it is the lightest 
of the pigment. Next, we use two red, one, two, because it has the medium amount of pigment and one blue because it has the most and the darkest amount of pigment. Now I want everybody to see mixing these colors together. It is the perfect brown. The perfect brown lives right here in the center of the color wheel. It is neutral. <clears throat> okay, everybody got the color wheel? Now we're going to talk about the three layers of the hair. And we're going to look at this as an egg. So the medulla is going to be the yolk. Next we have the cortex and the cortex is the egg white. And then we have the cuticle, which is the shell of the egg. It protects the shell protects the egg, so does the cuticle. The cuticle protects the hair strand itself. And actually, if we blow a hair, a single hair structure up, this is what it's gonna look like. Let's talk about the textures of hair. So we have three different types of textures of hair. We have fine hair, which is small because of the granules of the pigment in the hair are very small. So the porosity of the hair does not have a lot of pigment, a lot of uh, texture. There we go. So when we talk about fine hair, let's talk about fabric. Fabric compared to fine hair is like silk. If you think about silk sheets and how the feel of the silk sheets, it's very soft because of the texture. There isn't a lot of fabric there. Then we talk about medium textured hair. And we're going to think like cotton, your cotton clothes because the granules of the pigment, there's more of it, just like cotton clothes. There's more granules in the fabric of the cotton. There's more threads than there is in silk. Now we're gonna talk about coarse hair. Coarse hair is very large and it takes more. Pigment, it takes more granules because the texture is so much more. The and, and the coarse hair 
it could take a lot more time to process as well because there's so many, there's so many granules of the pigment that it could take longer to process. Now we're going to talk about, there's four types of color. And in those, oh, sorry, we're going to talk about pigment first. There's two types of pigment. There's <clears throat> eumelanin, which is black and brown pigment. I want everybody to take their phones out and I want you to Google an email. Yeah, it's a, it's a black and brown bird. So when you think of eumelanin, think of an email, black and brown. And the other type of melanin is pheomelanin, and that's your reds and your blondes. Now, faux melanin means fake, and blondes and redheads are classified as fake. So, faux melanin, fake. Now, on to the four types of color. So, we have four types of color, and in those four types, the first is temporary. Temporary washes out with the next shampoo. It lives out here and does not penetrate the cuticle. And it's got very large molecules. Next, we're gonna talk about semi-permanent color. Now, semi-permanent color, has, has anybody ever colored their hair with Kool-Aid? I did whenever I was a teenager. It stains your hair. So, it, and it stayed for a while, right? So, semi-permanent color is like six to eight shampoos, because it actually has smaller molecules and it sits just inside of that cuticle. Now on to demi permanent. Demi permanent. Demi permanent is what I use on my hair. And it lasts about six to eight weeks as long as you treat it right. So if you're washing it and rinsing it in cool water, then it will last like it's supposed to. But if you're washing it with hot water, hot water causes the cuticle to swell up and wash the color out faster. So we wanna make sure that when we're washing our hair and rinsing our hair, we're doing it with cool water because it also is healthier for our hair rather than washing it in hot water. So demi-permanent color it actually lives right here and can penetrate into the cortex. That's why it lasts longer and it has smaller molecules of color yet over the temporary and the semi-permanent. And both the semi-permanent and the demi-permanent have some of the color it requires developers and some don't some are direct dyes now we're going to talk about permanent so permanent color is permanent 
you are not going to get rid of that color unless it grows out or you cut it off. There is going to be a line of demarcation. So here is a hair, hair strand. And let's say this is previous color. And this is my scalp. Mid strand. And ends. This is previously colored hair, and that is my regrowth. The permanent color will not go away. Now, the developer, you have to use developer with permanent color. You can either use 10 volume for depositing or 20 volume for gray coverage, and it lives here it penetrates into the cortex and the developer makes the cuticle swell. So the color can penetrate into the cortex and then the pH of washing the color out seals that cuticle back up and that's what changes the color of your hair because that permanent color penetrates the hair and lives in here, in the cortex. And there, the molecules of the color pigment are a lot smaller and there's a lot more of them. Okay, everybody understand that? Now we're gonna move on to developers and their purposes and when we use them. With developers, there's 10 volume, 20 volume, 30 volume and 40 volume. The 10 volume is 3% hydrogen, sorry, <laughs> hydrogen peroxide. 20 is 6%, 30 is 9%, and 40 is 12%. With 10 volume developer, 10 volume developer is deposit only. We only want to use 10 volume when we are depositing the hair because it makes the cuticle swell so the color can be deposited into the hair. So 10 volume is deposit only. And you can possibly get one level of lift with 10 volume. With 20 volume, we want to use 20 volume if we're doing gray coverage, especially if it's 50% gray or more. So gray coverage, and you can get two levels of lift off of 20 volume. volume 30 volume you can get two to three levels of lift depending on the texture of the person's hair and 40 volume you can get <clears throat> three to four levels of lift also 
40 volume is used most of the time in high lift design. So for instance, it's gonna be a one to two ratio when we're using a high lift, one part color, two parts, either 30 volume or 40 volume. And that helps, oh, and it has to process for 55 minutes because that will allow the developer and the color to lift that color and then deposit the color back in. If you don't process it for 55 minutes, it's not going to work properly because it has to have that full 55 minutes to deposit that color back into the hair. The other thing that we're going to talk about with developers, let's say there's four of us at a bar and the 10 volume would be, we're going to take shots, a quarter of a shot, 20 volume is a half of a shot, 30 volume is three fourths of a shot and 40 volume is one full shot. Now it is 9 p.m. and we take a shot. All, all four of us take a shot at 9 p.m. Who's going home at 10 p.m.? Right, the 40 volume is gonna go home because they had a full shot. It is 10 p.m. and we take another shot. Who's going home? Right, the 30 volume. Now it's 11 o'clock and we take another shot. Who's going home? Right, 20 volume. And now it's 12 p.m. and we take another shot. And who's still out on the dance floor? Right, 10 volume is. All of these get you to the same place. The 10, 20, 30, 40, they all get you to the same place. But who's gonna get you there faster? Right, the 40 volume is. It's gonna get you there faster. And that's because of the percent of hydrogen peroxide in each one of these developers. Now, we're going to we're going to give an example here. Let's say that you need 20 volume, but you're out. Can you mix 10 volume and 30 volume together to get 20 volume? No, you really can't. Because if you mix these two together in equal parts, you're gonna get 40 volume because you're adding the percent of peroxide together. So you add 3% peroxide to 9% peroxide and you're gonna get 12% peroxide. So you cannot get 20 volume this way. In order to get 20 volume, you take, and it's a two to one ratio again. So you're gonna use two parts distilled water. And one part, 30 volume. It dilutes it down enough that 9%, it dilutes it down perfectly to give you 20 volume or the 6% hydrogen peroxide. Okay. <clears throat> Everybody got understanding of the developers. Now we're gonna move on to lighteners. So there's two types of lighteners. There's on the scalp, and there's off the scalp.
Each of them has a different pH. The on the scalp has a pH of about nine. And the off the scalp has a pH of 10.3. And that all depends on the manufacturer. The on the scalp has a pH of nine. Meaning we can put that lightener on the scalp, but we still need to keep an eye on it because it could still cause chemical burns or damage to the hair. The off the scalp is a pH of 10.3. We cannot put that on the scalp. It will create damage to your client's scalp and to their hair if you're not paying attention close enough. What lighteners do, they penetrate into the cortex and they break down the pigment before removing it or diffusing color. And the thing that we need to remember the most about lighteners is if they are wet, they are active. So if we're doing a foil and we are spraying that foil or that highlight off with water, we're reactivating that bleach. We just want to wipe it down. We don't want to re-wet it because if it dries, it's no longer active and it needs to be removed or re-moisturized to get it wet again to activate it. We are going to, I'm going to show you how to do a cap pull through. This is a very, very simple add on. I love doing cap highlights on men. It gives their hair dimension and just changes their whole appearance rather than bleaching their whole or lightening their whole head of hair. I always let the client tie their caps. One, Mr. Ian here has a beard and I'm probably pulling it pretty good. So having them tie it, it's not gonna pull, if they pull their own hair, that's okay. You don't need to be pulling it. And two, that's a pretty sensitive area right here under the chin. And if you tie it too tight, it could be very uncomfortable for your client. <clears throat> So when we are pulling through a cap, oh, and this is the proper way of putting it on. This little thing right here acts as like a hood to protect their face. And then there's this little scrunchy thing here in the back. It stretches. So this is the back. Now, when we are pulling through, this is a crochet hook. <clears throat> We're gonna pull through every circle, not every dot, but every circle. <clears throat> we don't wanna come at our client like this because you're gonna scrape their scalp. We want to angle the crochet hook and push it down at a 45 degree angle. We know 45, right? So 45 degree angle, and then when we pull it up, we pull up against the top of the cape and we grab the hair as it comes out. Just like that. This is a very easy add-on service. While he's processing, you can do another haircut. Just make sure to keep checking on him. Make sure that his hair is still in good condition. Now, if you see these loops right here, we're gonna take a comb after we get everything pulled out and we're gonna run this comb through the hair. And it's gonna take all of those loops that didn't come fully out whenever we pulled, it's gonna pull them out. That way we don't have half of the hair highlighted and the other half not, because it'd be the mid strand that would be highlighted. So just, we just take a comb, 
and comb those loops out. Now we're going to talk about our men's color line. This is a gray for gray coverage and it's color camo by Redken Brews. This color camo it has, it has six different colors in it. It has a line of ash, which is light, medium, and dark, and a line of natural, which is light, medium, and dark. I have pre-colored these swatches so everybody can see them. So you guys can come up and look at them. But I also did a couple of swatches of American Crew, their color line. So with the American Crew, here's the before, and there's a two, three, and a four, five. They name theirs differently, they just do it by level. But like I said, these are up here, if you guys want to check them out. It is one of the easiest add-on services that you can do for your male clients. Mr. Ian here, He's got gray hair and he doesn't want gray hair. He, he's too young. He feels that he's too young for gray hair. So he wants to get rid of the gray hair, but he doesn't want it to look like he's colored his hair. And that's when this comes in really, really nicely because it camouflages the gray. It is a semi-demi permanent color that you process it for 10 minutes. That's it, 10 minutes. So it fades out as it grows out. You give them a haircut first. That way you're not coloring hair that, does, that you're gonna cut off and then you're wasting color. So you give them this haircut first and then to apply this, it takes about two minutes to apply to this length of hair. That's it, two minutes. And then you let him sit for 10 minutes. You can charge $20, you can charge $30, and they will pay it because they don't want gray hair, but they also don't want it to look like they've colored their hair. So more money in your pocket, right? Easy add-on, extra 10, 15 minutes with the wash and you're done. That's another $20 on top of the haircut that you just gave him. So today we learned about developers, their different purposes. We learned about the two different types of pigment. We learned about lighteners, the two different types of lighteners, and we learned about our men's color line. And we refreshed our memories on our color wheel and how important the color wheel is when dealing with color. I know that you won't do a lot of color, but it is required to know how to do color and it is extra money in your pocket that you will want one of these days. So next week's theory class, I want you guys to create a creative color wheel. That is your ticket to class next week. And in creating the color wheel, you guys filled out your color wheels just like this. I do not want this. I want you guys to be creative. Show me what you got. Here's a Play-Doh one that I've started. That's just another example. I want to see how creative you guys can be. All right, you can go to lunch. Thank you.